welcome to part 6 of the live steam Charles loco build and welcome to my workshop and garden railway please like and subscribe for more slow builds let's get into the shaping of the cylinders this has been as enjoyable as making the dome of the quarry hunslet the cylinder shape is one of the unique features of the loco I've been thinking long and hard on how to go about it. This clip shows the left cylinder after shaping by milling away the excess in steps, ready for finishing. The cylinder assembly was kept together throughout as all the parts were milled and most of them were radiused. Here are the drawings of the cylinder block showing the sloping base and two differing radii at each end. The base is horizontal when attached to the frames. I used images of Charles's cylinders as inspiration for forming the radii. Lovely sweeping curves. The left cylinder is first up, mounted upside down on a piece of one inch by a quarter inch steel flat. It was the only way I could grip the odd shape. It's screwed to the flat like the cylinder is screwed to the loco frames. I'm checking the progress of the cut using my workshop mirror. The first complete cut, cutting the steam chest to width, 1.2 inches. I used a 4mm ball end slot drill, taking full depth cuts in 10 thou in increments on the vertical slide. The second cut is marked out an angle traversing up to the bore radius. Angle completed. I won't be doing this for the second cylinder, but I was just making it up as I went along. The large radius generated mathematically in 20 thou or half a mil vertical increments. The small radius around the bore generated mathematically. The vertical slide has been swiveled 8 degrees as the radius needs to progress further on the front face of the cylinder. Smoothed out. Marking the large radius on the front of the cylinder with a handy and convenient tin. Marking the smaller rear radius with my 60mm diameter wheel blank bar end. At last the cylinder is the right way up. Cutting the small rear side radius, cutting to the marked line. There's no calculations here, it was all freehand. The rear radius is nearly complete. Using the mirror to make sure that the small radius isn't cutting into where the large radius needs to be. The vertical slide is swiveled both vertically and horizontally to avoid that. Now it's time to work on the front face's large radius. So the cylinder needs to be upside down again. Cutting to the line and almost all the way across to the small radius on the rear face. Swiveling of the vertical slide to achieve this. Almost complete. These big steps will be filed out. Gently held in the bench vise for filing smooth. A lot of material has been removed during the profiling. It's a lot lighter than it used to be. It isn't perfect, but I'm very happy with it. I had the idea how to machine the profile, but you can never be sure if it will work out. But it did. It's a complex shape with the angle, two different radii, and the base that has to be horizontal when on the frames. Back on the frames. The base of the cylinder is parallel with the frames. Starting on the second cylinder, using the knowledge I gained from the first, the first radius has been milled. 
the straight part of the steam chest has been milled. The connecting radius had to be done in two cuts. Here it is with an eighth of an inch to go. Almost done. I had to leave it here at the end of the day. Done! Lovely curves. Aligning the marked out curves front and back with a workshop mirror. Cutting the small radius first. The rear of the cylinder. Both cylinders finish profiled. Out on the line. Thanks for watching.